Hello, my name is Paul Hake. I've been restoring a Lotus to Land Series 2 and just about finished restoring a Land Series 2. Um, if you've been watching these videos, you'll have seen that it was about a year ago when I got the body back from a paint shop. So it took me about a year. The rolling chassis was already finished. Um, it took me about a year to get it all assembled. Um, so in this video we'll cover some old footage that I hadn't posted before um, which covers the camped rails. Got a little bit of area interior trim, got the badges on the body and some trim at the front, uh, maybe a little bit of catch up under the bonnet and oh yeah rear drive shafts with the rubber donuts uh, going on. So let's get on with it. Um, just starting to fit the can trails um, so I've got this one around the door I'll show you with this other one I've got down here how this works in the back edge of it there is a bobbin so there's this threaded bobbin in the bottom which has got a screw through it protrudes through the bottom and it's got a plastic sleeve over the thread. It's about 5mm diameter outside of that. Um, and that locates in a hole on the body, which I'll show you in a moment. There's a bobbin here which is going to be used to support um, one of the rails that goes across the roof. Another bobbin here, slightly different arrangement this time. Um, so the rail slots into that from the top and then at the front there are two holes in this flat area um, which locate this piece which uh, fixes in see I've got a pile of washers on there because I'm having to adjust position by using washers to move this around to adjust the position of this pin which points forward so this is within the holes so this goes in okay so that pin goes in those two holes you can see the stack of washers here it's just allowing me to adjust the position of this pin and then bolts nut, two nuts from the outside um, these are the positions that were originally uh, drilled on this camp rail. So it's the original part and the original pins and I've made sure I'm on them the right side because they all look a bit homemade. Um, so that's going to bolt on there which gives you like a pin location at the front. So I'll just tighten that up and then I'll show you how it opens up. There's a gap over there. So you can see what my stack of washers is doing, just to line that to a little bit more parallel to the arrangement. And we'll just put this in. I've stuck this foam, um, it's a self-adhesive foam, which I've got in a big roll here. So I've stuck a piece of that, it's closed cell foam, just to protect the body of the car. Um, the original did have some of that on, whether it was from new or been fitted later I don't know but it seemed a good idea. In the top corner of the window frame I've just got this white material behind to make it a bit clearer to see. Um, you can see it's just um, a ring that is uh, welded, oh, welded, brazed to a stud with a bit of a washer on there. So that goes through a hole in the top corner of the window frame, windscreen frame, and that stud on the cant rail is going to fit into that hole. That pin is going to go in that hole, it's just a plain hole. It may be a threaded bob bobbin but um, the pin isn't screwed in, it's just going to slide in. And the one behind it is going to get a little tax fastener, um, which this clips, the cant rail clips onto that. So we need to slide that cant rail um, pin. Mm -hmm. I'm in focus. Not sure into that hole. So 
So let me do that first. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we are. It's home now. So that's gone into there. Got the idea? Yep. And then at the back, I've now got to persuade that in. And of course, it's because it's swinging down, it's never going to be in line. So you just have to force it forward and bend the canter rail till that pin goes in. It slides down. And there you have it. The canter rail is in position. Of course, I haven't got the little 10x fastening here, which will clip it down. And it wibbles side to side and it looks a bit high. Uh, it's better than was actually. And there's a gap here. So it may be. I'm sorry. It may be that I need to raise this up when the window's up. Let's pull the window up. So that's the window in its uppermost position. And if I pull this across. see there's a bit of a gap on this side so I may have to raise this up um, to make it fit better I could possibly drop this down a bit more but it's not going to change at the back so it just looks so the window needs to come up a bit more I'll show you the driver's side so on the driver's side you can see the glass um, is much better positioned in the contrail um, and you can see the cantrail is just clearing the top of the chrome part. So let's see if I can make that adjustment on the other side. So I've managed to adjust that. This is definitely much closer than it was. And now um, if you look here, the window is at least um, overlapping with the cantrail flange. That's where the rubber seal is going to go. So I think that might work, it's probably as far as it's going to go. The way I was able to do that was to loosen these two and lift that upwards and it did move up um, and I've kept it in the same alignment and then the other adjustment, because the glass wouldn't then lift up high enough, was to loosen these two fixing screws and lift this up you can see you can see some of the slot um, there before this was fully down and that because this has got a stop in place I had to move that up to get the window to go up so the glass is not quite at the top of there but pretty close so I think I'll leave it at that for now I don't want to force anything I've just slotted this um, roof bar into the cant rails just to see how it's looking. Um, so that's good if that bar needs rolling down and painting. So nice to see it with those parts in place. I'm just sorting out underneath the seats. Um, this board goes in, which is just vinyl covered hardboard to cover that um, exposed bit of floor between the two rubber mats that are front and back. These are the original rubber mats. So I've taken out the seat and the seat runners um, and just sorting out this piece of board. So I just need to put holes in the corners and then put it back with the seat runners on top. I'll show you the originals. The originals. Um, still got the old seat runners on. And uh, that's what they were. And amazingly, this one's even made out of two bits of hardboard, so they must have used up the crappy bits. I can't imagine it's not original. Um, that's the vinyl stuff that's covering it. And you can see on that one the vinyl's got a split on the top side. And yeah, pretty rough. A little grooves around there. No idea what those are for at the top edge. Or is it top edge? Front edge, back edge? Really not sure. Um, yields. So, and you can see on this side there was no hole in that side. It's all pretty rough and ready. So I made mine uh, 
well, I've measured them and used approximately the right sizes. So mine are 18 inches by 14 and 3 quarters, just in case you want to know. So there it is, board covered in vinyl with the seat runners on, fixed in place. Um, yeah, not much to say about it really, but that appears to be how it was. Yeah, so got those in and the script badges. Yeah, that little sort of laurel bit has um, lost its colour. And they're a bit corroded, but I thought I'd put the original ones back. So I'm absolutely certain they're in the correct place because I retained all the holes um, as I was doing the bodywork. So they're definitely where they were originally. And this is the one, the one on the back looks like. Oh, reflections uh, just in the wrong place. Um, so you can see the space in between the Clan and S2 is a lot larger, greater than between the Lotus and the Elan. And I've managed to break my original badge here, it's broken here. Um, it was corroded. Um, so that's rather annoying. I'm not sure I might be able to sort of fix it in place somehow. Rather retain it if I can. Look, registration plate. Uh, that's the badge. Oh, you can see me. Hi! Um, yeah, that's the original badge decal on this side. So the engine bay is pretty much finished. I've tidied up where these pipes go and I think I've got the wrong material because um, I think they're melting just here. I can feel some distortion. So I think the material I've used is too well either too thin walled or is just the wrong material. Um, I've got to tidy up the way this fixes. The, I've seen um, a recommended way is to clip it to this so that there's no stress here as the engine moves sideways. Um, if that is also fixed to the engine, then the movement is taken up by this big coil rather than just locally here. If it was not fixed, it might vibrate and stress at that joining point. So that seems like a good idea. Um, it may not have been like that on the very original cars, but it just seems sensible. Uh, I replaced these clips with ones that are better size because I was getting a few leaks and I'd clamped them up to full tightness so they were just too large diameter. Look at that. I had the engine run up to maximum temperature and the electric fan works with the little switch here. Um, it's about 90 degrees on the temperature gauge. And, and, and... Oh, and the clutch released when I tried to put it in gear. Um, so it let me put it in gear and I could release the clutch. I haven't got the half shafts in yet, so but it was clearly turning the prop shaft and diff and stuff. Uh, the time has come for me to fit these half shafts or intermediate draft shafts with the Rose Flex couplings, these rubber donuts. Um, they're already fixed to the diff and the hub and I've got to fit this shaft between them. And it is a bit stressful. Um, you have to weigh the car down, so I've got the rear wheels, I've jacked it up and put it on these ramps so I've got some clearance for me underneath, and then I've had to weigh the car down to get um, to get the rear suspension, uh, or stop it from drooping, I'll get a light in a minute, um, and I've done that by loading up the boot with stuff, um, yeah bags of sand, cement, an old vice. It's all a bit <laughs> stressful just lifting those into the boot. Um, so let me get my light. Where's my little light gone? I've lost it. I'll come back to you in a moment. So if I get my little light here, you can see there is a red flex coupling fitted and you'll see the big Jubilee clip band which I've been using to control the uh, position of the holes in the rubber donut um, and a bit of levering with screwdrivers I managed to get it in and I've just on the last 
bolt on this side. That one there I've got to get in. I'll show you underneath. So from underneath um, I've got this A-frame pretty level really. The idea is to try and get that drive shaft as level as you can between the two donuts and that's the last whoops, like shadows. You can see the end of the last bolt just appearing maybe yeah I don't put a shadow on it. So I've got the others. This one's still got its original band on um, which holds it theoretically with all the holes in the right place but you still need to lever it about a bit. So there we go getting there. Decided to get the front silver trim strip fixed in place. Uh, here's my solution. Um, I've received a few suggestions and um, this is one. Richard sort of suggested this idea. So I've got some weight on it because it was tending to spring up and I have masking taped off around and put in a bead of silicon. I've just done it between the two, well the insides of the two light pods at the moment. So that's been like that for a couple of days so I'm just going to remove all this and see if it has stuck and then work on the edges. So it seems to have stuck okay. I'm just um, getting some of the masking tape off. I've put this masking tape either side slightly underneath the trim so that if any um, silicon rubber splurged out it wouldn't go on the bodywork. That's just dust I think. Right? Um, so that seems to work pretty well. I'll leave it there I think. I've still got to go around that corner. Oh yay! That's a bit more like it. I think quite a number of people might leave that silver trim off. It's a bit fiddly. And if you prepare the bumper in the body it looks pretty good without it. But I have to say um, it definitely sets off the silver no, chromey bits in the badge. Sorry, that light's right on it. You can't see it. But yes, I rather rather like the look with that silver trim in. So we'll get the corners done. I've heated this up with a hairdryer. Um, this trim, by the way, is from Paul Matty's. Um, bought it a couple of years ago, so 2017 and uh, it's pretty compliant actually um, so I've heated it with a hairdryer and it's gone around the corner I'll, let me just show you the section I've cut this end off um, and it's got some little sort of tangs on it um, on this section that goes in the gap and I've made the gap so it's only just big enough so I took this bolt off, slackened it and push this in and then tighten it up and it's actually grabbed hold of it so there's no adhesive on this section at all. Um, it's just a bit gappy at this end so I will splurge a bit of silicon rubber behind it and stick it down. I trimmed off the T piece back to about there. Um, so I'll stick that in and the other side is similar. Um, probably slightly better. So again, this has got no adhesive in. And again, I've cut the teepees off the end, but that's pretty good. It's grabbed it really quite well. So I'm going to try it like this and see if it all stays in place. Um, but I have to say, it did, it did mold itself around the corner. Well, I pulled it round, didn't do it itself, um, pretty easily. Mmm, nice. So where should this end? In line with it there, a bit further back, no idea. I'm going to leave it like this and I shall compare. I'm going to always 
slacken this off pop that back out and trim it again if I need to so there it is um, yeah where to finish this just in line with that Yeah. Eh? At least it doesn't have the horrible screw through the end, like the later ones did. I've put some silicon adhesive just in the very end of it and just using this plank to push it into the car. Supported. Um, so that should be okay. I'll just have a quick look at the other side. Similar idea. So just using that stick. Nice flexible bit of stick, and it's just pushing um, the trim into the car. So I've just got some adhesive silicon sealant in the end. So that seems to have worked. I just botched a bit of um, silicon sealant in the end, and that seems to have got it held. So let's just peel some of this tape off. Not bad. There's a tiny little bit of silicon rubber to tidy off, but. Um, yeah, pretty pleased with that. Sorry about the light. Eee, nice. Nice. I like it. And so, let's see if the stick has worked on this side. Hopefully it's stuck it in. Oh yeah, don't think that moved. Oh yeah, a little bit of silicon rubber to tidy off again. But that's where I've ended it on this side. And yeah. I'm just see if I can light that a bit better. So that's looking pretty good. I like it. Hmm, whoops, sorry. Um, windscreen wipers. We now have windscreen wipers. Um, as is traditional, they sort of hang off the edge of the windscreen. Um, these are replicas that are sold online. Um, pretty good, I would say. So that's what I went with. I was looking out for some originals, <coughs> but haven't found any and really wanted to get it finished. So got these. Um, I've even had occasion to test them because I had the car outside and it drizzled. Um, I got it back in pretty quick, um, but it did give me opportunity to test the windscreen wipers and the motor and stuff and it works. And the dual speed, well it's not dual speed, it's variable speed. Um, yeah, that worked as well, which was a nice, I shouldn't say surprise, should I? But it was good. So, windscreen wipers on. Um, bonnet is in position, as you can see. Um, I've folded up these very thin uh, stainless steel pieces to go over that part, um, which, which goes on to the catch. Um, I've seen that on a friend's car, so copied the idea. Um, I suspect it was probably done originally if he'd put it on his car. This is Brian, who uh, is a good friend. So, got those on, and the bonnet does clip down, and you, obviously you can see the bonnet is in place um, on its springs. So you can see the spring. I shall point at it. Um, there it is. That ring on the end allows you to, well, get your finger in it and pull it onto the the little bolt. Let me get in a bit closer so you can see what's going on. So in the case of the Series 2 and Series 1, it um, has a spring either side, which goes down onto the chassis. I'll be able to show you that on the other side. Um, and then a bobbin in the bonnet and a screw just a spacer nut. So yeah, you have to get a hold of that ring and hook it on. Um, it's pretty tough. These are new springs, as you can see. So I tried the old springs. They're very similar, actually. So I've left, put the new ones back on. I'll go around the other side, show you that one. So 
so there it is on this side same idea with the screw and it runs down to the chassis maybe I can get enough light in running from top to bottom and you can see maybe let me try the light around there where it hooks on to the chassis just in a hole so um, so that's good anything else happened yeah I had a leak on that joint there it was letting some water out when it got very hot oh I've replaced these pipes with the originals so I've used the original pipes now um, which aren't melting like the pipe I'd used and put bits of black tape on um, to just hold them together I tried to get the position of that black tape in the same place as is on um, some original photos I've still got to finish this that horrible tie wrap there just in case that offends you um, we'll go eventually I've got the wrong size pipe so I need to replace that pipe um, I've improved the rubber seal in there because I was getting a bit of an oil leak around here so hopefully that's resolved um, sorted out the carburetor not sure if I've mentioned that on the shafts of the carburetors there's like little if you look at the video with putting those together you'll see it's like a little leathery washer that goes over the ends of the butterfly shafts they were clearly too tight and it was stopping the carburetor closing quickly enough so I managed to pull those out without them to take the carburetors off just unscrewed the ends let me go around and see if I can show you anti a, a, a little tab washer that stops the nuts from doing so take those off took them out managed to pull them out the ends on all four and um, that's sorted out I was getting a lot of uh, popping and banging in the oh, popping and crackling in the exhaust uh, when the throttle was shut and, and I took the car out for a couple of runs and that was resolved by tightening up the exhaust manifold which had become amazingly well I won't say loose but um, it was very easy for me to tighten up so the gaskets must I don't know shrink something obviously changes when you first get the engine hot or well, first few times so that's good um, I've put some clear silicon sealant on these lifters so that one didn't rattle anymore and I've fixed the other one in place on the other window uh, seat belts I've shown you that it's got seat belts these are the type that were fitted to the later cars um, so I've made them fit well they fit pretty easily really but they pick up on the um, bolt that goes through to the chassis at the back um, with a nice sort of spacer washer so they can pivot round um, and then down in the down behind the seat there's a couple of rings one there and one down here and I've managed to just bolt them onto those rings so they're nice and secure So let's just push the bonnet down so you can see how that works. Um, it sort of slides at the front, but you have to encourage it forward. And then it will push down on these little clips. And you sort of have to make sure that the um, the clips are forward. There we are. So, yeah, pretty pleased with that. Okay, so that's the end of this video, and I think that's just about the end of the videos showing the car being assembled. I can't think what else I might have to show you. Um, so I shall miss do these videos, um, but and I hope you've enjoyed watching them. But I'm sure I will post some videos of the car out and about. Um, so watch out for those as well. So, okay. Um, so good. Any questions? Please let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks for watching.